All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Van Hack podcast episode. Today, we're really exci- I'm really excited to be discussing a very important topic here, about uh, which is growing you know, yourself as a professional in tech and how to become actually a software engineering leader. Uh, we're going to go a little bit beyond the essentials of code uh, and talk about how you can develop into a leadership role. So if you're powered about leading a team, helping a team achieve their full potential, making difficult decisions, you know, working with, with uh, the business and understanding how to make strategic organization, uh, organization decisions, this podcast for you. Um, so today we're super excited and proud to be joined by Vitor Oliveira, who is an extremely successful Van Hacker that was hired back in 2019 as a senior software engineer. And he moved from uh, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro to Canada then. And now he's grown and is actually starting up his own company. He's the CEO and co-founder of Napis, which is a school and community for software engineering leaders. Also, Victor and I are good friends. I've known him for about 10 years, and uh, you're, we're going to be in for a great episode here. So, hey, Victor, good to have you here with us. Thanks for joining us and uh, ready to get started. Thanks for having me, Ilya. A pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Well, let's jump in. Uh, can you just give everyone a little background of your career? Uh, just, you know, the, the, the typical Van Hack. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I, I'm, my name is Victor, and uh, I've been a software engineering professional for around 17 years, I worked as a digital contributor for over a decade, and recently I've been working as an engineering management professional. And uh, I, as Ida mentioned, I am a van hacker. I relocated to Canada three and a half years ago, and it's been uh, a very positive experience. And um, yeah, so this change has allowed me to, it has a big importance in my career uh, throughout these years. I have been able to get a new perspective about my life. So moving abroad has helped me to uh, understand and also learn more about cultural mentality and the approach to life that most comp- most cultures have. And in Brazil, we don't have uh, those characteristics. I've also been able to improve my communication skills in Canada, working you know in different companies and also participating in different uh, education programs. Uh, Canada has been great uh, for me to expand my professional network. So nowadays, due to this uh, relocation, I've been able to, you know, uh, get to know people in the U.S. here in Canada and also in other countries. And I've also been able to work and also build diverse teams in Canada, as Canada receives uh, several different, uh, you know, cultures uh, by the immigration programs every year. So it's been very like positive in my journey, this career change, and I thank you, Van Heck, for that. Oh, our pleasure. That's uh, that's great to hear. So let's let's dive into Napis. How did you start Napis? Uh, where did you come up with the idea, and what's the purpose behind the company? Yeah, so Napis was a personal problem to me when I switched from an individual contributor role to a leadership role in software engineering. I had to look for leadership and management education. It was hard to find technical institutions that could provide me the right training. So I had to, you know, choose a few institutions. I studied and then I connected the dots. I also had mentors that supported me. And uh, so that was my experience uh, as an individual. But I also faced the same challenge in 2020 when I had to scale a team of four developers to 20 developers. And in that occasion, uh, initially, I was the only leader, the only manager. And as we were hiring more people, I had to develop leaders internally and provide training and environment where they could grow with us. And again, like it wasn't very easy to find specific technical training for my developers. And you know, having said that, I experienced the same problem in both situations in my life. And that's why I decided to start NAPS. And NAPS is an educational and community platform for soft engineers to grow as leaders. Uh, we have two fellowships that offer art based programs uh, with coaching, mentorship, and community events to make software engineering individuals and teams develop leadership skills and also hard skills. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, it's definitely a different, uh, there's always kind of those two paths, right? If you're either gonna be like a subject matter expert or a team lead, right? If you wanna grow your career as a developer and- I think it's the same thing for many other positions too, like in sales, well, uh, marketing, you know, they're going to be really good at one thing or, or, or leading people. And sometimes the best coders aren't necessarily the best leaders. 
Um, so it's, it's definitely a different, different skill set. Um, so, you know, what are kind of, you think the most important leadership skills to have in, in, the, in the tech world as a developer? What are kind of the, the main core aspects that they need to develop? Um, yeah, so to be able to migrate successfully to a leadership position, uh, you need to work on a few skills. And, um, and I, I, I'm going to basically talk about, you know, the initiatives that you could start promoting in your teams and also in your professional life. So the first one, any leader would provide focus and direction to the team that they are involved. So like starting to define, you know, the goals and explain objectives to each team member uh, in order to make them understand where, you know, the direction is going. Uh, being a leader also has a lot to do with empower the members to work at their full potential. And that means, you know, obviously you always want to check in with your team to see how things are going, if the tasks are, uh, have some progress, but you also need to make sure that you are also able to unblock them whenever they have any problems in any tasks and uh, you are there and you can connect with that developer with other people that are going to facilitate that situation. You know, taking responsibility for decision making. So it's starting to speak up and showing position in certain engineering challenges that your team may face uh, is definitely something that is very important because that's what moves an engineering team. Uh, the ability to teach and share information to others. So a good leader usually is a good teacher, usually is a good person who wants to share, who wants to learn, has a growth mindset uh, and being able to understand strengths and also weaknesses, I would say it's very important. And in my opinion, it is very related to self-awareness. So first, like to be a successful leader, you need to first understand yourself, uh, where you're good at, where you're not good at, and you need to work in your weaknesses to be able to successfully understand uh, you know, people's perspective in your team. Yeah, that's so true. If you can't, uh, I guess, lead yourself first, uh, that, that's, that's where it all starts. Uh, fantastic. Um, and so, you know, what are the kind of maybe skills you can, you can think of, like, um, like maybe something specific? You said teaching, but is there anything else, like, more um, in-depth that you can think is, is something that could be more, um, I guess, specific? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it's... It, it, this is not really about like software engineering in general. It, what I'm going to talk is about leadership in general. And uh, you can, you know, practice and do leadership in so many areas in your life, right? It's not only software engineering. But I would say that, you know, leadership competences that are very important to be developed would be self-awareness, as we said, and a perspective taking for sure. Like the ability just to, you know, learn how to understand others and also be silent. You know, let people speak, let people work, and just be a facilitator when you need to be a facilitator, and be a decision maker when you need to make, when you really need to make a decision, and not bother your team. Uh, so also like understanding the awareness of the context that you are involved in is important. Whether you you are a remote company or you are an on-site company, it makes a huge difference in the way how people build relationships and how they connect. Um, I would say communication is a competence that it is extremely important. Uh, usually people who relocate from uh, different countries to Canada, they have English as a second language. So it's even harder for them to, you know, to, to overcome the barrier language and be great in communication. So communication is a competence that a software engineer has to practice and improve on a daily basis. Um, I would also say that another competence that is very important is decision making. So the ability to move the projects forward in a company, it is very important. And uh, so these competences are very important to be developed. Uh, I would say that also, you know, you need to uh, understand which values, uh, your personal values you value. And to be a successful leader, you need to practice some values for your team. So you, you need to show humility. You need to be you know, a curious person. You need to have compassion because life is tough. And uh, as a leader, you need to understand others. And you need to have the courage to have direction and make changes when necessary. So I would say it's a combination of like competences and also uh, of values so that people can connect with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, what you said there about making changes, that's probably one of the hardest part, right? When you have to let someone go or give someone some negative feedback. 
any advice on this uh, difficult conversations? Um, yeah, so w when you need to let people go, I think uh, you need to be transparent. And first, you need to be upfront and uh, like connect uh, on a regular basis on in one on one meetings, making sure that, you know, uh, expectations are being met, you know, with the company, with the developer. And if they're not being met, you need to be transparent with the developer. Uh, you need to make sure that there is like some sort of plan of improvement for the developer. And, uh, and if it doesn't work well, uh, you need to bring, you know, maybe one or other leaders in the company and try to think about a plan. And if it doesn't really work out again, um, then you would need to evaluate whether it, it, is, it makes sense to keep with the professional. I mean, is it this professional really a good fit? Um, is the company a good fit for this professional? So I, I understand that it's a tough decision to make, um, but sometimes it's, it's the best decision for the team. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I've been like go before myself and it always works out better. And uh, yeah, you, you can't always have everyone exactly the right fit. It's just not possible. So yeah, uh, sometimes it need, needs to be done. Um, it's better for both parties. Um, another question here is what, what about um, the difference between being a manager and being a leader? How do you see that distinction? Yeah, I think the overall key difference is that a manager usually focuses on planning, organizing, coordinating resources to manage tasks and deliver results. So it's the person who is going to uh, be like kind of a project manager, but it will also be managing the resources and also managing the evolution of the product, right? So it's someone who is going to be kind of tracking people. And, uh, and there are a lot of ways to do that. There are a lot of styles to do that. And a leader, on the other hand, will inspire people we motivate, we influence, you know, people that are around is leader, and this will help them to drive, you know, the team members to the shared goal of the company, to the objectives that people are trying to achieve. It's possible, obviously, to be a manager and a leader at the same time. It's possible to be just a leader and just be a manager. Um, I think, yeah, like I would say that you can develop almost anything in life and uh, developing management skills and also leadership skills is possible. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely, uh, I again, agree. It's one thing to be a manager and kind of tell people what to do and it's a totally other skill set, much more difficult to inspire people to, to actually want to go after you, your, your path. And, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's hard. <laughs> um, okay, well, how about the different kinds of leaders? You know, what, what, what like there's so many different types of software engineers, uh, people who are a little bit more introverted, people who are more extroverted. Um, do, you, do you find like there's a specific type of person who makes a good leader as a software engineering, like a CTO or VP engineering, or what are the different types of profiles that you see for uh, engineering leaders? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say like, it, it's not really about like being introverted or being extroverted. I would say mm -hmm. that it, more about the yeah it's more to, it's more about like caring about others and you know being able to connect with people to make results in a project and then like being introverted is not going to really block you from becoming a great leader um so, and and also like i've seen like extroverted people that are not really good leaders because of many other reasons so i wouldn't say you know there is not like a, a certain type of person that can that you know, that had more like facility to, to grow as a leader. Uh, and th there are definitely like different types of leadership. Like, I believe there are like six or seven types of leadership. And uh, people, you know, at, in our life, as we grow, uh, we tend to observe, you know, the leaders that we most spend time with. So you would end up with a file and uh, by the time you become a leader, you have to lead a team, you would express those characteristics that you've learned during your life but you can definitely change your style as you go and also depending on the context that you are so depending on the culture the depending on the company culture that you're involved um, a specific type of leadership would be most more suitable and uh, so so and you can change and you can act differently depending on the context um, so i would say like for example just to illustrate the leadership styles there is that uh, leadership style that is more democratic. And uh, the democratics are very open with the team members. You know, they share information with them that may affect their work day. 
Uh, on the other hand, you would have like a, a leader that has a more coaching style. And usually this kind of leader uses the coaching style uh, in, to make the team members uh, to perform bad. And uh, th this leader is always looking for ways to unlock their potential. So, you know, you see, you can have like different styles uh, at the same time as well. But I would say that it really depends on the team members that you have. It really depends on the culture and the values of the company. Yeah, for sure. There's no one type. That totally makes sense. Um, let's switch gears here and talk a little bit about Women in Tech. It's a very big initiative in that hack is to kind of break the bias and help people uh, of all types of people from everywhere around the world and all types of different diverse uh, types of people, um, you know, get hired, and especially, you know, women. Um, what's your advice for talented women out there who want to become leaders in tech? Um, yeah, I, so the first thing is uh, find a great mentor. So find someone who you trust. Um, and that's yeah, not really only about for this occasion, but anything in life. Like if you want to learn about co uh, if you want about if you want to learn about soccer or about other sports, you need to find someone who is much better than you, maybe 10, 10 years ahead of you. And uh, you know you don't have to navigate your career trajectory on your own. Much of your success will come from receiving these soft advices from mentors, and obviously. Mentors can also, you know, tell you the wrong things and you need to be able to go there and test. So having people that can support you is definitely something that is very important. Learn how to take negative feedback, you know, how, knowing how to handle criticism instead of allowing it uh, from your goals and aspirations. So, so I would say like receiving, not only receiving feedback, but also the ability to give feedback, you know, to people who are more junior than you, or maybe even for your superiors, superiors, because that's a, a two-way road, and uh, you need to make sure that you are always also giving feedback, and you, you need to ask people to give you feedback. Uh, so never stop learning. So you 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 gotta have a growth mindset to be successful in tech. Whether you you know it's not about the gender, it's really about you know your ability to grow as an individual technically over time, and uh, and you you need to be able to complete the block. So this is going to be a building blocks journey. So initially, you might start with front-end developer or development over time. You're going to be learning back-end development. And then after a few years, you're going to be studying DevOps. And then you're going to be studying mobile development. And after 10 years, you might be doing AI. So this is never going to end. And uh, you are going to be competing with, your, with yourself, not with others. It's, it's about like challenging yourself and uh, over overcoming the difficulties, um, you know, the ability to speak up. If you are in a team, uh, give suggestions, like uh, make sure that you participate, that you're active in that, you know, small community, which is your team, you know, communicate clearly. I would say it's a, it's a very important thing. And, and as the last thing I would say, finds, finds out what motivates you, right? Find passion in your, in your work and, uh, and you're going to be successful. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. If you love what you're doing, and you know, you're gonna grow for sure. Um, well, I, do you have any advice, kind of, to wrap up here for Van Hackers who are listening to this? Um, you know, why why is it important to improve your le uh, leadership skills, and what are some kind of practical things that they can do to start right now um, to kind of get ready for uh, being a leader or improving the leader that they already are? Um, yeah, so leadership skills are important. For your business it will definitely help you you increase productivity efficiency and uh, you are going to be able to do the same with your team members you know increase productivity efficiency so it's not going to be about you anymore specifically uh you need to look at your teams and believe that that you know it, it is not her problem or it, it is not his problem it is our problem and once you know you are able to understand that and you are able to you know, work with them with the right soft skills. I mean, with your team members, uh, you're going to be able to be, you know, you're going to be able to learn much better than you can expect. So my my advice is, you know, if you really want to step in a leadership position, uh, you need to start looking at your team as an asset and start trying to find opportunities for them to achieve their full potential. And working with them, like if you see that someone's blocked, you know, be a leader of that team 
and try to unblock that junior developer or intermediate developer in case you're a senior developer and know how that specific problem could be solved. So it is in these actions that you start building this different behavior and, uh, and you're gonna be noticed in your company and people will also potentially promote you just because of your attitude. Eventually you could really become a team lead. And yeah, as a final comment, like leadership is not about the position. So you don't need to be like a lead software developer to act as a leader in your team. You could be a junior intermediate developer with a very strong attitude and you could really help your team to move forward. So the leader, that, and that's what the leader does. It sets the direction and it puts the team forward, right? Uh, whatever it needs to be done. Uh, and you as, you know, one of the core components in, in your team has the ability to do that. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, well, thanks, Victor. Uh, this was really nice. A lot of great tips, very actionable. Um, awesome to see, you know, someone uh, go through the journey being a van hacker, then growing. You actually helped hire other van hackers, and now you are, you know, starting your own business in Canada. So that's that's amazing to see. I'm so happy uh, for you. And uh, yeah, uh, everyone, if if you like this episode, please share it with your friends. Um, you know, get in touch with Van Hack, subscribe, all those things, and hopefully you'll be uh, one of our success cases soon, like Victor here. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, William.